The movie begins in Leningrad in 1940. A young woman named Anya works as a seamstress in a factory where a young machinist, Vasily, who is very serious, notices her and even asks her to introduce him to her only relative, her brother Peter. However, Anya asks for a little more time and the young man agrees to wait until the next day. But as the girl leaves for her lunch break, he quietly follows her, admiring her. Anya walks down the street, looking at a dirigible hovering above from which German journalists are filming the city below. At this moment, a tram driven by Peter pulls up to an intersection. Suddenly, Anya realizes that a fast-moving truck is about to crash into the tram and her brother will likely perish. Frozen in fear, she suddenly emits light waves that lift the truck into the air and throw it away from the intersection. The tram's windows shatter, injuring people, but a major accident is averted. This entire incident is captured on film by the journalists in the dirigible. As the shocked people try to recover, Peter jumps out of the tram, grabs Anya, and quickly takes her away. The girl regains consciousness in their shared room. Peter packs their belongings, urging his sister to flee Leningrad, although she is reluctant since they have already had to move several times due to her supernatural abilities manifesting at the most inappropriate times and attracting the attention of the authorities. Peter asks her to control her powers, but Anya is unable to master them as they are beyond her control. At that moment, representatives of the People's Commissariat for Internal Affairs burst into the room and arrest the siblings. An investigator named Ivan arrives at the scene. He interviews the victims, and one of the women recalls the strange girl standing at the crossroad. Back at the office, Ivan begins interrogating Anya, but she cannot provide any concrete information. She insists it was just an unfortunate accident, and then Ivan shows her photos from their previous residences where strange incidents and destruction occurred, prompting the siblings to move hastily. The investigator is willing to believe she is not a criminal, especially since he has also witnessed something very strange in his life. However, Ivan is unable to elaborate as his superior, Petrov, who turns out to be his father-in-law, takes Anya and leads her to the secret facilities managed by Professor Ilinsky. The scientist welcomes the girl, explaining that she is special and now they will study her abilities. However, Anya refuses to cooperate until she sees her brother, and Ilyinsky promises to arrange a meeting for them. Meanwhile, Ivan cannot calm down, although Petrov, who is also his father-in-law, demands he forget the incident and focus on other matters. He had already barely managed to suppress his absurd report about an incident in Madrid. Returning home, Ivan tries to tell everything to his wife Vera, but she asks him to take a vacation and forget everything that happened. The action shifts to 1936. A group of Soviet soldiers, including Ivan, engages in battle with Spanish fascists in Madrid. Suddenly, a man in a strict coat and hat, wearing a strange mask, appears before them. Looking at the soldiers, he utters something incomprehensible, after which Ivan's comrades start shooting themselves one by one. Only Ivan finds the strength to shoot at the man in the mask. The man quickly disappears, leaving Ivan amidst his fallen comrades. The year is 1940. A man in a mask named Neumann and his assistant Katerina arrive in Munich, where the woman meets a Jewish boy named Baruch on the street, who plays chess brilliantly. She offers him a ride with them, noting he can always leave if he does not like their school. An orphan agrees and gets into the car, where Neumann utters several hissing words, causing Baruch to fall asleep instantly. Neumann agrees that the boy is brilliant, but by no means possesses superpowers. However, Katerina is determined to help the boy. Meanwhile, in Moscow, Professor Ilyinsky leads Anya to the laboratory where she will be studied and fulfilling his promise, brings her to a cell to see her brother. Peter again asks her not to show her abilities and she promises to write to him. Baruch is brought to an ancient castle owned by Neumann. The boy is laid in a hammock in a hall inhabited by many other teenagers. But when the adults leave, he wakes up and is frightened by the dark silhouettes surrounding him. Back in Moscow, Professor Ilyinsky leads Anya to a separate room, more like a cell, and locks her in there. He then reports to Petrov that he has never seen anything like it. The girl is a scientific discovery, a unique case, to which the chief objects, she is a new weapon. Later, Anya is subjected to various tests, but she shows nothing special. Ivan cannot forget the incident, studying everything related to the strange explosion. The video footage of the accident also reaches Neumann, and he decides to fly to the USSR. There, the man is taken to meet with Professor Ilyinsky. 
Neumann introduces himself as a worker from the Ananerba organization and immediately determines that the professor is terminally ill. He offers to ease his pain if the professor allows him to speak with Anya. Ilyinsky does not believe in his abilities, but Neumann utters something, and glowing waves emanate from him, enveloping the professor, causing him to lose consciousness. Taking advantage of this, Neumann searches his desk and takes some papers. Soon, Ilyinsky regains consciousness, but strangely feels no pain. He agrees to arrange a meeting with Anya and leads the German to the laboratory. Neumann approaches the girl and secretly shows her an execution order for her brother. Then waves of unprecedented force begin to emanate from the girl, literally blowing up the entire laboratory. Neumann grabs her and escapes. Ivan sees from the window a man in a hat whom he immediately recognizes and runs to the laboratory where explosions are heard. But Neumann and the girl are nowhere to be found. The narrative shifts to 1924. In a remote Karelian village, a woman lives with two children, Peter and Anya. One day they go with the village boys into the forest. Suddenly a pack of wolves leaps out at the children. The children freeze in fear, but waves emanate from Anya scattering the beasts. When the men arrive at the clearing, they find the girl dead. 1940. Petrov enters the devastated laboratory, where people connected by tubes into a single organism and marked with the letter M lie in chairs. At first glance, this structure was not damaged by the explosion, as the injured Ilyinsky lying nearby confirms. The professor reports that Anya caused all this and refuses to continue the experiments. Then Petrov shoots him. Afterward, he goes to Ilyinsky's colleague, who everyone simply calls Professor Lyubov. Petrov asks her to activate the M squad. Learning about the professor's death, the woman refuses to help Petrov, but he reminds her of her family, and Lyubov reluctantly agrees. On the train, a customs officer searches Newman's compartment and finds an iron sarcophagus with Anya inside. Unsure of what to do, he goes for help. Meanwhile, Anya envisions her own funeral following the incident with the wolves. Frightened, she comes to, and Newman informs her that he is saving her. Anya tries to run, but the customs officers, who decided to detain the strange German, stop her. However, he utters something, and the military personnel bring their pistols to their own heads. Neumann and Anya leave. At the same time in Moscow, Petrov reports to his colleagues that a member of the Ananerba, which translates to ancestral heritage, Neumann has stolen a valuable exhibit from the USSR, the girl Anya. A squad has already been formed to pursue the German and will depart in a matter of days. Learning of this, Ivan requests to be included, but Petrov, feeling sorry for his daughter, refuses to do so. Neumann leads Anya to a spot where Katerina's car is waiting, and she drives the pair to the castle. It is apparent that the woman does not like Neumann's new toy, but he immediately says that Anya is just like him. At the castle, they are greeted by children whom Neumann calls his army. Anya is escorted to her room, and Neumann finds a guest in his office, Admiral Canaris, who is very interested in the scientist's research. But today, he has come to express his displeasure with Neumann's sabotage in the USSR, as it could start a war. Neumann reassures him and invites him to a formal dinner. Meanwhile, Anya is startled by a sound and sees Baruch in her room, trying to open her window to escape the castle. But Katerina and Neumann appear and stop him. While Katerina takes the boy away, Neumann tries to convince Anya that the castle is a paradise, and no one wants to leave of their own volition. And Katerina brings Baruch to a bedroom, reminding him that he must speak only German and not tell anyone his real name if he wants to live. But when she leaves, the other teenagers attack him. In Moscow, Ivan asks his wife to help him get enrolled in the squad, after which he goes to Professor Lyubov. He is interested in whether hypnosis can make a person do what another wants. The professor asks him not to travel to Germany, but he is determined to find the man in the mask. In the castle, Anya finds Baruch hanging. The boy tries to explain that the others hate him and beat him, therefore he wants to run away. But Anya admits that it was the same for her until she became strong, and he can too. Later they find Neumann in the park, who promises Anya he will teach her to control her power. He explains that he inherited the castle from the person who adopted him, and now it serves as a refuge. He has set up Anya's room according to her taste and hopes she will like it here. Grateful, Anya sits down at the sewing machine, unexpectedly remembering how the villagers burned their house, calling her a witch. Then her brother saved her, though their mother died in the fire. Back in Moscow, Petrov enrolls Ivan in the squad and asks the commander to ensure that he does not return. 
1937. Returning from Madrid, Ivan writes in his report everything he witnessed, but Petrov does not believe him, noting that if the soldiers shot themselves, they could be declared deserters. Tired of trying to convince the young man, Petrov takes him to Professor Lyubov. 1940. A special forces unit travels to Germany in a grain car. Ivan warns his comrades about Neumann's peculiarities, but it seems they don't quite believe him. At the castle, the children undergo daily training while Anya enjoys the long-forgotten peace. In the morning, Katerina brings her a box with a new dress sent by Neumann for her to wear at his birthday party. The girl goes out to the hall where the children are preparing decorations for the evening, and then they head to training. Baruch is afraid of heights and falls from a rope ladder, but no one pities him. After that, it's time for shooting practice, but the boy throws his pistol down and runs to the local cemetery where Neumann finds him. Baruch asks to be let go, but the scientist promises to teach him not to be afraid. Meanwhile, Squad M climbs out of the wagon, and Ivan remembers his training in 1936 before being sent to Madrid. Then his comrades met him coldly because he was the boss's son-in-law, but Ivan earned respect through hard work and cleverness. And now he is on a special mission. Suddenly, they are hailed by an old man who turns out to be their liaison and must take them to the castle. At the same time, Petrov is informed that the squad has successfully crossed the border. Guests start arriving at the castle. Norman welcomes Canaris and escorts him to the hall where music plays, and ladies and gentlemen drink and talk about the beautiful evening. Neumann himself is enchanted by Anya's beauty, and she gives him a hand-embroidered handkerchief she made for him. Later, guests deliver laudatory speeches in honor of the birthday boy, and he invites Anya to dance to the envy of the present ladies. Canaris notices Katerina's displeasure, but the woman remains cold, rejecting his advances. She dislikes Canaris's interest in their wards, and he tells her that people are already coming for Anya from the USSR. Squad M reaches the forest house of their liaison, who supplies them with weapons and draws a path on a map, but then shots ring out. German soldiers have caught up with the saboteurs. A battle ensues and the Russians win. Later, the commander finishes off the wounded enemies and, unexpectedly for Ivan, shoots the liaison, indicating that they have no orders to return. At the castle, Canaris agrees to play chess with Baruch, and the boy wins. The admiral admires his genius, but upon learning that the boy is Jewish, he pulls out a pistol. Anya sees the man aiming at the child, and her powers activate. Guests watch in horror as everything in the hall begins to rise into the air. The admiral himself is lifted up, but at that moment, Neumann grabs the girl by the shoulder. She faints, and Canaris falls to the floor. Everything stops immediately, but people scream and scatter. The furious admiral orders all children to be destroyed within three days and departs. Neumann escorts Anya to her room and admires her because today she managed to stop. The girl does not understand why it is necessary to destroy the Jews, and Neumann reminds her that no one pitied them either, as they were not like everyone else. The man returns to his office where Katerina awaits him, but he does not accept her attentions because he is seriously captivated by Anya and hopes to succeed with her. However, Katerina is saddened by this turn in their relationship and reminds him of Canaris's order, but Neumann intends to make a profitable deal. The action shifts to Neumann's childhood when children laughed at him and drove him away. His parents were forced to put a mask with a digital lock on him so he couldn't harm anyone, and the boy suffered greatly from this. One day, his father complained to the landlord that his son was hindering his ability to fulfill his duties as a tenant, and the man came to see the unusual child. They explained to him that Neumann scared all the guests and caused his father to lose a finger. The year is 1940. The morning after the dinner, Anya goes out to the hall, but the servants who witnessed yesterday's incident look at her warily. Then the girl goes to the park where she is met by an armed Katerina, but seeing the guards, she returns to the house. Later, Neumann conducts a meditation for the teenagers, asking Thor to give them strength. Anya sees this and asks for permission to start training. Neumann orders Katerina to stay at the castle and wait for guests, and he takes Anya away. Meanwhile, the squad continues to move through the forest. Soon, they find a rubber boat at the prearranged place. Neumann puts Anya on his personal plane and takes her to his parents' house. Landing, they walk across a bridge, and suddenly, Neumann asks the girl to remember her brother. Her powers activate. Water rises up, carrying fish and creating a reverse waterfall. But then the man calls her. Anya comes to her senses and everything returns to normal. 
However, now she can use her powers when she needs to. Soon they enter an old house and Numan recalls how he was taken from his father's home. Lastly, his mother writes down the password to his mask on a piece of paper, and little Newman leaves their lives forever. In the present, he tells that his father was a harsh and cruel man, often beating him and his mother, so he promised himself that his child would never be unhappy. The man remembers how his patron removed his mask and wanted to throw it away, but Newman did not allow it. The man informed him that he would now take care of him, but he must trust him. Soon they arrived at the castle, where the patron confessed that every person has the right to be happy, and the boy lived for the first time like a normal child. But a year later, war came. His patron went away on business, and their home turned into a hospital. Neumann helped as best he could. Once he had to assist in the amputation of a leg, the soldier was in great pain, and then Neumann activated his powers and relieved the poor man of his suffering during the operation. Later, he confessed to one of the nurses that he loved her. The adult woman laughed at the boy but said she loved him too. But one day he caught his nurse with one of the recovering soldiers, and in a fit of rage he made the soldier kill himself with a hammer. They caught him, gagged him, tied him up, and took him away from the castle. In 1940 he tells Anya that his parents died, so he is so happy to have found her. The girl lights candles in the fireplace, using her new powers which delights Newman. They drink wine and then become close. At night, Anya dreams where Baruch dies and wakes up terrified. She asks Newman to return to the castle. Meanwhile, the squad reaches the river. One of the soldiers is wounded and runs out of strength. Then he takes his own life so as not to be a burden to his comrades. Only three remain, but they still row towards the castle. And there, Katerina, who can't sleep, reminisces about the past when she helped her mother, who worked in a psychiatric hospital, where one day they brought in a tied-up boy named Neumann. She then freed him, and he promised never to harm her. The year is 1936, Leningrad. Petrov attends a lecture by Professor Ilyinsky, where he discusses a significant discovery in the field of controlling human memory and emotions. Ilyinsky's colleague, Professor Lubov, is inspired by the future changes, as people with good mental health will be able to work better and create a brilliant future for themselves and their children. The Project M envisions a new society where happy people with immense productivity and willpower will live. Petrov asks about the use of these discoveries in the military sphere, arguing that if a new society is to be built, it must be able to defend itself. However, Lyubov categorically opposes totalitarianism. After the lecture, Petrov offers Ilyinsky full support for their program if he agrees to operate under military auspices. But Ilyinsky sends him to Lyubov as the ideational inspiration behind the project. However, the woman flatly refuses to cooperate with the military. That same day, she is hit by a car in the street. Later, Petrov returns to Ilyinsky, informing him of the unfortunate accident with his colleague, and Ilyinsky reluctantly agrees to cooperate. Again, 1940-year Germany. The three remaining members of the squad reach the castle's territory. Surprised by the lack of security, they enter the premises. Petrov receives a summary of incidents in a specific area of Germany and realizes that everything is going according to plan. His boss is horrified. His people have left a very noticeable trail, which could easily lead to the USSR being accused of provocation. But Petrov assures him that everything was planned this way and there will be no international conflict. At that moment, his daughter calls and he rushes home. The squad members reach the castle and, splitting up, begin to explore the premises. Meanwhile, Petrov finds Vera in a hysterical state. She is going mad with worry for her husband, and the father decides to take action. At the same time in the castle, Katerina reads a book to the children, and seeing her nervousness, they calm the woman. She orders lights out and leaves, just as Ivan enters the hall from the other side. Seeing the children in front of him, the man lowers his weapon and leaves. The children remain motionless. The soldiers continue to explore the castle, and now the squad leader enters the hall with the children. But he does not lower his weapon and prepares to shoot. Then the children attack first. The commander fires in all directions, but the teenagers throw their clothes at him and knock him down. The eldest orders the pistol handed to Baruch to kill the enemy, but the boy cannot shoot the man, and the man manages to wound him with a knife before being killed. The children carry the bleeding Baruch to the bedroom, leaving the soldier's body on the hall floor. 
The third squad member, a female warrior, finds Katerina's office and engages her in a shootout. Katerina flees, but the woman catches up to her and they fight. The woman is defeated when Katerina pushes her away. Seeing her opponent unconscious, the German grabs a pistol, but doesn't manage to shoot because Ivan appears. Threatening him with a pistol, the woman captures him. In Moscow, Petrov brings his daughter to Professor Lyubov and asks her to erase the girl's memory. Lyubov is outraged by this request, as the love for a husband is the most precious thing in Vera's life. However, under military pressure, she agrees and performs the necessary manipulations, while Petrov's subordinates methodically clear their apartment of photographs and items belonging to Ivan. But one photograph falls under a chest of drawers, and the soldier does not notice it. After the procedure, the girl regains consciousness, but does not remember her husband at all. At this time, the teenagers attack Ivan, not noticing Katerina, and wound him in the arm. The woman drives off the aggressive children and escorts the wounded man to Norman's office, where she admits to Ivan that she recognized him because she had seen him in Madrid. He asks why her master kidnapped Anya. Could it be that he wants to use her in the war? Katerina assures him that he still doesn't understand. People are petty and greedy creatures fighting for power. Neumann is unique. He is ready to seize all power on earth to save the world from war. Meanwhile, Newman and Anya arrive at the castle and find a wounded woman on the threshold. The scientist finishes her off with a pistol while Anya runs to the bedroom to the teenagers and finds Baruch dead. At this time, Ivan is bandaging himself while Katerina explains that they teach the children survival by developing their skills because their destiny is to save the world under Norman's leadership. The woman offers to help him escape if he will help her. But before Ivan can hear her out, Newman enters the door. The Russian immediately picks up a pistol and takes the woman hostage. However, the German informs him that he does not care about her fate, which visibly upsets her. At that moment, Anya runs into the office and uses her power to knock Ivan off his feet. But when she recognizes the man, Neumann quickly takes her away, leaving the Russian with Katerina. In Moscow, Professor Lyubov mourns Ilyinsky when Petrov brings her folders with the names of the condemned, whom she can save by including them in Squad M. She remembers how after the accident, Ilyinsky came to her in the hospital. The man was shocked to learn that she had been mutilated by the military, but he was frightened and could not refuse to cooperate. Now the woman is alone and forced to make difficult decisions. She takes out a vial of M activator and recalls Ivan's story about the man in the mask. After his return from Madrid, she worked with his memory, suggesting removing the traumatic memories of his comrades' deaths. But Ivan refused to erase his life. And now the young man is chained in a cell in the castle of the man in the mask. Later, Anya visits him, accusing him of killing Baruch, but the boy denies it, and he is not particularly interested in her fate. He only wants to destroy Neumann because all evil comes from him. He hypnotizes children, turning them into killers. Their conversation is interrupted by Norman's appearance. After sending Anya away, he thanks the young man for revealing his vulnerability, as he is the only one who could stand up to him. To prove it, the scientist shows the finger shot off by Ivan in Madrid. He too is special, and Norman really wants the Russian to join his side. Yes, he killed his friends, but it was war. He came to Ananerba to find gifted people. Anya is like him, and they are the future. He asks Ivan to admit why he is immune to his hypnosis. Then Ivan reveals that there is a whole squad like him, Squad M. There are many of them, and they will all be here soon. So Neumann cannot hide. After talking with Ivan, Neumann finds Anya in the castle's backyard. The girl asks him to hand over all affairs to Katerina and to leave this place forever. But Neumann does not want to run because they are extraordinary people, and when they are together, they are unbeatable. He asks for her help in defending their new home. Later, he thanks Katerina for managing the situation and confesses that he is glad she was not hurt during the Russian raid. Meanwhile, Anya remembers how in Moscow she wrote letters to her brother while locked up in the laboratory. She used to give them to the professor, but she could not have imagined that he read her letters to Peter, who was undergoing mental processing as a participant in Squad M. At this time, she burns them in the backyard of the castle, hoping that life will give her a chance to start over. Later, the castle's inhabitants conduct a funeral rite for Baruch. The teenagers carry the boy's body to the seashore, where the cemetery is located, and burn it on a ritual pyre. Anya is shocked by the number of children's graves and realizes that Ivan was telling the truth. 
Katarina urges her to leave and save herself. Anya runs to Ivan's cell and asks him to tell her what he saw in Madrid that was so special. The boy talks about the death of his comrades and Neumann's chilling whisper, but the German doesn't know that he just had a misfire. He is not special and survived only because of the pistol's malfunction. But if Neumann finds out, he will kill him immediately, and only Anya can stand up to him. Out of the darkness comes Katarina, who has heard everything. She will let them go if they leave forever. Neumann is planning to sell the children to Canaris, and Anya can do nothing about it. They are weapons, and it is high time the Russian understood this. But Anya runs away while Katerina frees Ivan from his chains and advises him to make sure the German never finds them. Meanwhile in Moscow, Petrov enjoys his daughter's good mood, hoping she will meet another man, marry, and give him grandchildren. The girl is lively and cheerful, unaware that the photo under the dresser awaits its moment. At this time, Neumann orders the Russian man to be killed, and he goes to look for Anya. Meanwhile, Katerina leads Ivan to her car, where Nomanwan's guard catches up with them. He engages in a fight with the Russian, and when he is about to kill him, Katerina attacks the guard. The guard is much stronger, and Katerina has to shoot. The teenagers hear the sound and run into the courtyard while Katerina puts Ivan in the car and drives him away from the estate. Neumann finds Anya at the cemetery. The girl asks him to let the children go, but he refuses. They are insignificant to him because he hopes to build a new world using their combined powers. Moreover, they will definitely have a son who will be the strongest and greatest on the planet. Hearing this, Anya wants to leave. Then Neumann sees Katerina's car and realizes what she is about to do. He puts on his quantum mask, which greatly amplifies the power of his voice, and begins to speak while Ivan stands on the car step and aims an assault rifle at him. The mask works, Katerina's car loses control and crashes from a high cliff into the water, but Ivan manages to jump from the step and survives. Then, members of the second squad M, who were heading to the castle, covering for the distracting maneuvers of the first squad, open fire on Neumann. But the soldiers are programmed for total destruction, and one of them engages in a fight with Ivan, not realizing he is an ally. The young man has to kill the soldier. Neumann asks Anya to activate her power, and the girl begins to do so when she recognizes one of the soldiers as her brother. Neumann is knocked down by her force, rocks crash from the sky, and the girl runs to Peter, realizing that this time he is indeed dead. Anya's powers activate again when Neumann falls from Ivan's shot. The girl mourns her brother as teenagers appear on the road. Ivan grabs Anya and drags her away while the children pick up Neumann's body and carry it into the castle. The Russians run to the airplane and manage to take off at the last moment. Nine months later, Neumann, who survived the injury, listens to Hitler's speeches and experiments with a new kind of influence on people, broadcasting his voice through radio equipment. Meanwhile, in Anya's native village, a bearded Ivan arrives from the woods as his woman is about to give birth. Pregnant Anya is dragged into the village where women come to help. As the birth proceeds, an announcement about the start of the war with Germany is broadcast from the speakers. Later, surrounded by streams of power, Anya gives birth to a healthy baby boy. Neumann is immediately informed by a fortune-telling girl. Then one of the villagers recognizes Anya and hurries to tell his fellow villagers whom they have just helped. But Ivan stops him when bombers appear in the sky, from which a large number of paratroopers descend. 